Hey y'all, it's Jessica with Keepers. And today I'm out here at our onion and garlic harvest. We have them on these racks. You can see we have some nice size onions and garlic heads are stuffed in here in between. And it is so humid that some of them are not drying very well. And so I'm gonna go through and get the ones that are a little odd shaped or small and show you how I'm going to preserve some of our onions. And so I've got me a, a basket. I'm gonna fill up, I'm gonna take it inside. And today I'm going to show you how I dehydrate um, some of my onions and preserve them just as chopped dehydrated onions, how I make onion powder, and then I will freeze some that's just chopped up. And then I'm gonna try something new that I've never done. And I'm going to try fermenting some onions as well, because why not? Why not learn something new and try something new? So I'm gonna get busy filling my handy dandy basket up and get started and show you uh, how I do this. Okay, so I have my basket of onions in here and then I have me a five gallon bucket. I'm gonna peel the onions and then wash them off and then I will chop the tops and the ends off. We will chop them up in my little mandolin chopper I got off of Amazon and start filling the trays and putting them in the dehydrator. So I'll bring you back in just a moment. Okay, so I got my onions washed and got some of them with the ends chopped off. I like to cut mine in half so they fit better into the chopper. And then um, I'll show you what size it is. Um, it looks like this. And I'll pop that back in here if I can do it one-handed. Okay, and then put an onion in here and just smash it down. It chops it up for you. Then I'll show you what it looks like when they're chopped, what size it makes. So then I'll do this and fill the tray up and then I'll come over to the dehydrator and put it in the dehydrator. I have a few trays already in there. And what I love about the Excalibur, I don't know if you can see this, but it has the different drying settings and a little guide to tell you um, for what you are dehydrating what temperature to set it at. So I'll do mine at 125 and I'll let it dehydrate for 24 hours. I'll turn it off, let it cool for a little bit and see if the moisture is out of them completely. And then I will store them in the jars. And I have the dehydrator going. You can probably hear it in the background. And now I'm going to work on the fermented onions, which is something I've never done before. So um, I'm gonna use eight grams of salt and one and a half to two pounds of onions and I'm going to slice them into rings. You can use this, um, the fermented onions, salads, sandwiches, burgers, um, as a side item. You can add them for like scrambled eggs or fajitas or whatever you would like to. I'm doing a lacto fermentation, which is with the salt brine. So I'm going to take the onions and use my mandolin that I was chopping with earlier and I changed the cutting um, setting. I took the one out, we switched it around and now I'm going to slice them into like rings. So let me show you that. Okay, so this is what I changed the blade to and um, use this to slide the onions across. And then once you do that, let me show you. You get these beautiful little rings. So I'm gonna take these, I'm gonna cover them in salt. And one tool that I highly recommend if you're into fermenting is to get a scale. Um, I think mine's a Weight Watcher scale. That was my mom back when that was a thing. She doesn't use it anymore. Um, so. Uh, you'll use eight grams of salt, one and a half pounds of onions. You'll cover that. Your onions have plenty of water in them. And so they're gonna create plenty of juice. And so I'll cut these up, get the amount we need, get them covered in salt, and then we're gonna pack them into our jars. And from our after that, we will put our fermentation tops 
well, actually, I'm going to press them down with these to make sure everything's covered. Um, to keep it all pressed down under the juices from the onions, I'll place these on top. They've been washed. Um, I don't sanitize them because we are fermenting and we do want the good bacteria. So I just wash them well and then um, we'll seal them. I'll let them sit for uh, about a week and then I will check them out and see if... Um, they're at the stage that I won't, I'll taste them, make sure everything's okay. We don't have any bad bacteria growing in them. If they taste like I want them to, then I will finish the ferment out and I will um, take the fermentation tops off, put a lid on them and store them in the fridge. They'll last in the fridge for a good six months, if not longer. Um, and if it doesn't taste as sour as I want them, uh, I will let them sit a little bit longer. Um, this also helps taste, take that spicy bitterness uh, or spicy bite, not bitterness, spicy bite out of your onions. Um, it may be easier for your kids to eat them this way because uh, they're salty. And I don't know a lot of kids like that salty and sour taste. So this is a good way to maybe get your kids to eat some vegetables by fermenting some onions. And then after I get this done, since how we have the dehydrators going, I'll get the fermentation onions going and I've never done this so I'm only going to do a couple jars of this. Then I'm going to turn over and do um, the food saver and vacuum seal some onions to store in the freezer. So uh, I'll show you how to do that. We just got this a couple weeks ago. Um, I absolutely love this thing. So um, let me get started and show you what it's going to look like. Okay, I have my onions all sliced up right at two pounds. I have my eight grams of salt. I'm going to pour my eight grams of salt in. And I'm going to make sure I get this all mixed in well. Let it sit for a few minutes so it can create the juices. And then I'm going to pack them into the jars. So we'll do this step and then I'll bring you back to the next step. Okay, so I have put the salt in and I squeezed this, smashed this, and let it sit for a while now, and it has liquid in the bottom of it. So now what I'm gonna do is take the onions and place them in the jar. So let's, and I'm just gonna use my hands. I'm not a nice nasty. This may not work for some of you, and that's okay. So I'm going to make sure that I have space as well in the jar because as it sits, it is going to get more liquid because onions are full. So I'm going to make sure I have head space at the top for more liquid, but I'm also going to make sure that I'm smashing this down. And I don't know if you can see this. Do you see all the liquid on the top? I'm making sure that these onions are completely covered. And then I'm gonna take my fermentation weight and put on top and smash it down and bring that liquid to the top. Do you see that now? And then I'm gonna put my fermentation on the top so it can burp, put a ring on that, and I'm gonna let it sit for a week. And then in a week, I'll come back and check it and see if it is at um, the taste that I want it to be and make sure that we don't have any bad bacteria growing in there and then um, after a week I will take the weight out the fermentation top off and put a seal on it and put the ring back on and then store it in the refrigerator and this would be good for um, at least six months up to a year this is a good way to preserve your onions to get some good gut bacteria into your health and a good way to get kids that love salty, sour things to eat vegetables. You can throw it on their sandwiches, on their tacos, fajitas, with um, scrambled eggs, uh, whatever you like. If you have another recipe for ferment and onions, I would absolutely love to have it. And so the next thing we're gonna do with our onions is um, we're going to use the food processor 
or not food processor, the food saver. Let me get over here and show you. And then I'm going to chop some more onions up and store them in the food saver and throw them in the freezer as well for those really quick nights that I want to have fresh onions in soup instead of dehydrated onions in, a, in soup. Um, I can grab one of the bags out and throw some onions in whatever it is I may be cooking. And I'll show you that process as well. Okay, so I have showed you how I dehydrate my onions and my little experiment of fermenting some onions. And now I'm gonna show you a third way that I preserve my onions and that is using my um, food saver and freezing some. So let me show you how I do that. And the process is just like before peeling the onions, washing the onions, chopping the onions, but I'll show you what size it is whenever I chop them up and um, then how I use the food saver. So let me show you that. Okay, so I've peeled my onions and I've washed my onions and so now I'm gonna cut the ends off. And then I like to cut mine in half. I just cut them right in half. And then I stick them in my chopper just like I did before. Let me make sure I'm getting. And press them down. So the size that I'm using in my chopper, let me turn it this way. Maybe this would be better for you to see, yes. The size chopper I'm using is the same size I used for um, the dehydrating. And so I just cut the ends off. You can save the ends that you have and put them in a bag and use them later on for like broth and stuff instead of throwing them out. And let's see, piece here. I'm gonna cut the bad piece out of this onion. Throw it to the side. That's just where it's so humid outside and it is trying to sprout. Okay, and then I'm gonna continue to do this and chop all these onions up and once I get all of this done I will show you how I use the food saver so I'll be back with you in just a moment okay so I've got them all cut in half chopped in the chopper and this is what size they look like um, it's just the same exact one that I used when I dehydrated. So now for my food saver, you can buy bags that are, um, let me get back out. You can buy bags already pre-sealed on one end and the size that you want. Um, I would like to do these in quart sizes or as close to quart sizes as possible. And I'm out of the pre, uh, fab bags I guess you could say so what I'm gonna do is take my roll of bags this is the last piece on the roll you can buy them where they come in rolls like this that I just unrolled um, and I'm gonna use that to do mine so I'm gonna use this last piece of one that I have and on these food saver bags let me see if I can show you on the rolls they have can you see that there you go the pre-marked lines in between where you can cut and then on one end they also have not very good at this where you can write the date and what's in the bag and where you can cut in between and then this end is already sealed this end is already sealed but as you can see it is not sealed all the way through so when we cut it in half we'll have to seal both ends and I will show you how to do that so I'm gonna cut this in between each one of these that I have. And no, I am not good at cutting straight, so please just bear with me. Um, they will probably be as crooked as I'll get out, but they'll work for me. It's just going in the freezer. I'm not trying to sell these on a stand anywhere, so. Okay, so when I seal them, they're actually gonna go like this right here. So I will seal this part, I will fill it through this end, and then I will seal it again. So I'm gonna take you over here and let's see if I can get you set up where you can see what I am doing without breaking the camera or making a big mess. So I plug this in, um, I'm gonna lift it up. Let's see, can you see? 
and then I'm going to seal one end and you just want to have just enough to get in here. I'm going to close the end. Oh. Okay, and then I'm going to mash the button seal. Make sure I got it locked good. Okay, turn the knob on this one. I have two different ones. This one has a little knob on it. So when you unlock it, it won't do anything. You lock it and then now it will. So now I can mash my button seal and it's gonna heat that in for me. Once that's done, then I can take you back over here and we'll pack it with some onions and see if this is the size we wanna use or if we wanna go a little bigger. Um, and if I do that, I'll have to use the other roll because I should have waited before I pre-cut all of those. So the light is off. Let's check and make sure it's sealed. We'll unlock it, open it back up, and look at that. We have a sealed pan. So now, oh my nose from cutting all these onions. I've noticed the smaller onions are the ones that are a little more potent. We'll move these bags out the way. Make sure you can see. I'm gonna fill this bag with some onions in here. You want to make sure when you fill this up that you're going to have plenty of space to seal on the other end. So that's probably about good. Now I have wet onion hands. Let's see, I can probably put a little bit more in there. I hope you're seeing all of this. Okay. Spread it out pretty evenly. Okay, and then we're gonna go back over here. This counter does not have a uh, outlet, so I have to move back and forth. So I'm gonna stick this up here, make sure I get my onions flattened and spread out. I'm gonna stick it up here like this. I'm gonna close my onions are falling. I can close my lid on it okay and then I'm gonna hit vacuum and if there's not enough space for it to suck out then it will not vacuum it well so we're gonna hit that on here and you can see let's see if I can get in here so you can see You see it shrinking that bag up tight. So it is sealing now. And you can see it's pretty tight. Let's see how it does. Let's see if I cut it too close. It sealed the end and it will suck the juice out. You have a little tray in here that if there's any juice that needs to come out, it catches. And so I will dump that before we do the next one. Okay, so while that one was going, the tiny one, I'm gonna make a bigger one now and we'll seal it and I'll show you, make sure I get it in there good. Show you what it's gonna look like. Um, and we'll stuff it. Okay, so now we have this one sealed. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so let's stuff it now. Okay. I do like the pre-made bags better that you can get through Food Saver just because they're a little more convenient. I'm not good at cutting straight and um, you are a little more consistent on 
uh, what size you're actually putting in there. But let's see, I'm gonna put a little more in there, I think. Okay, that's what we have. So now we're gonna go over here and we're going to seal this. Hopefully I do a good job at this. Okay, we're gonna lock it. And then we're gonna hit back. Let's see, it's not vacuuming. Let's, oh, one end is shoved up too high would be why. If we don't get it just right, it won't be able to suck the air out. Okay, so let me show you what I did. I had this shoved up here, and so it's not able to do anything, and you need to kind of bring it below. And this tray is gonna catch any juice as well. So now let's try that again and see if it does a better job this time. Now I hit back, so you see the difference, how quick it started sucking it in? sucking the juices out now it is sealing and then let's see if it keeps the seal sometimes when there's too much liquid it can make it hard to keep a seal and onions are full of liquid so it has sealed I'm gonna release it and you can see it did not keep a good seal as we would like because of all the liquid let me show you how much liquid is in this tray so vacuum sealing may not be as good as an option as I was thinking because it doesn't keep uh, the bag. But then again, let's look at what we did a while ago. So we were thinking the bigger option because it seals faster, but let's look at the smaller option. The smaller option actually sealed very well and the bigger bag did not vacuum and i think it's because it has so much more space maybe i should have packed it a little more so let's try doing this again i have another bag right here and i'm gonna stuff it and see if i put more in there and less space for air if that helps um y'all are learning with me and maybe this is why our ancestors didn't have all these gadgets. They had easier ways of doing this. Use them up, dehydrate them, um, grind them up, just use them fresh. Instead of trying to figure out all these ways to extend our food a little longer with the gadgets that come out, even though we do love our gadgets and they are convenient. Okay, so this time I stuffed it with a lot more onions. Let's see if this is a better option with stuffing it more onions. Which if I have to stuff it with this much and then I have to cut it open to use it, I'm probably going to prefer the smaller bags. Let me dump the tray real fast if I can get it out without making a mess. Okay, now my kitchen is a disaster. There's tomatoes everywhere, and then there's onions everywhere, and then we have VBS coming up. So there are boxes everywhere. Okay, now I'm gonna lock this down. There we go. And then I'm gonna hit back. Let me move this back so you can see. And it immediately started vacuuming that out. Let's see if it seals better this time with there being Okay, we see the seal button. We're going to wait until that goes off. Right? Look at there. We are sealed, it sucked it down, it did a better job. So when we don't have as much volume 
it does a better job. So that's what we've learned with uh, the vacuum seal. If it doesn't have as much space, and when there's not as much liquid in it as well, it vacuum seals a little better. So let me show you. I still have all of these to do. I'm gonna finish them up. And then I wanted to show you, I pulled the onions out of the dehydrator. One dehydrator full filled three quart jars with dehydrated onions. I'm gonna put the lid on that and put them away. I don't have any more gallon jars. They're all used up. So I'll just leave them in the quart jars. And I try not to use my dehydrated onions until I'm out of all my fresh or frozen onions. And then I'll tap into my dehydrated onions. So I'll show you how many bags I end up with frozen that I've done today. And this is what I have dehydrated. And then we have the two jars that are fermenting. I have a bag to do and it's not as much left. So I have one big bag and the rest are smaller bags. So let's try that again and this time I'll take you with me. I'm gonna close it, I'm gonna hit moist and then I'm gonna hit back. Let's see if I do a better job this time. Okay, it's sealing. I can hear it sucking the juices out. It's really tight. Let's see if it stays that tight when it's done. Um, and it may take a little longer to seal because it's a smaller area. May have compacted it a little more. I'm thinking that the smaller amounts do a little better. Um, but I would love any tips that y'all have. Okay, so it's done. I'm gonna unlock and it did much better. The smaller bags seem to do better to me. Um, maybe it's something I'm doing wrong, so any tips would be great. So this is what we have. We have three jars of dehydrated, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six bags of the vacuum sealed, and they're different sizes. So the ones that may not be as tightly sealed, I will make sure I use them first. Um, and then start using the ones that are vacuum sealed a little better. And I would love to hear how you are um, preserving your onions. The next thing I'm gonna work on preserving is all the tomatoes that I have in the house. My counter is slammed full of heirloom tomatoes. I don't know if you can see. And then we had some tomatoes given to us from a neighbor and then from my mom from a local farm. So that will be our next project is preserving tomatoes. I look forward to hearing your t uh, tips and tricks for the food saver and ideas of how to preserve onions. And I can't wait to see y'all in the next video. Bye.